What's wrong with him? <laughs> oh, look, we'll do him no good standing about in the freezing cold. Come on, inside, the lot of you. Come on, inside. Constable, where's the owner? In the office, sir. Right. And that was the one who had the gun? Yeah. A bit taller than the other fellow. Well, no, no, I wouldn't say he was tall exactly. What either. would you say? 5'8", five, 5'10"? Five, well, I'd say 5'10". Look, I'm sorry, I'm not being much help, am I? Don't worry, sir. Take your time. Things will come back to you. The only thing that comes back to me is the sight of that gun. Shut my eyes, I see it. Another day off gone, eh, sir? What? This is Mr. Baldwin. He's the factory manager. Owner. Owner. Detective Inspector Brewster, sir. Apologise before we start. Make you repeat yourself at all. But I want to hear it from the beginning. Now, what was the first thing you saw or heard? Well, I, uh, I went down the passageway to Mr. Bishop's office, sir. I don't know why I went, I've forgotten, but anyway, I, I stuck my head in and there were these two fellas, lads. I, I didn't see the gun at first and well, then there was this in, incredible bang. I mean, I just opened the door, I hardly said anything. This would be what time, sir? But you know, I, I think he's bought it. They'll do all they can, sir. This was what time? I don't know, uh, 10, 15 minutes. I can't put it to a time, can I? No, sir, I know how it is. No. After the shot. Well, uh, Ernie was across the room. He was uh, laying on the floor by the desk. Took the lock. Then this lad points a gun at me and I... I just went rigid. And then uh, he pushed past me and dashed out. I, I didn't chase him anyway. There was I think no you'd have been very foolish to have given chase, sir. You've described them, have you, for my sergeant? It's a tidy picture of both men, sir. Considering Mr. Baldwin was only in their company very briefly. A couple of lads. Sure you got the age? You say around 20 yards? 25? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. I find it hard to put an age to them these days. Sign of getting old. But it matters. Think about it. Now you've got your wind back. The age of these two lads. Because once I know the age of a lad, I know what kind of world they inhabit. A couple of years either way can make a hell of a lot of difference. I don't know. 1920. That's all I can say. Well, I want you to do better. I'm doing my best. I'm helping, aren't I? No, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you because you have been robbed and the man has been shot. I want these two lads put away and I want to put away fast. And if you don't think you're being handled with kid gloves, you know why. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Whilst it's still fresh in your mind, their faces. Well, I don't know. It was over in a matter of seconds. They didn't stand there posing. The one with the gun. Light coloured, short hair. Very light coloured? Well, fair. No, no, no. Uh, Fairer than average. You notice his eyelashes? Well, no, no, should I? You would have if he'd been really blonde. Was it neat, his hair? No. No, it was uh, spiky, sort of sticking out, as if it had been rubbed the wrong way. Ears? No, no, I didn't notice his ears. Not prominent in any way? No. Skin, put a colour to it. White. Not a nice, healthy pink. No, dead white. I think he was as terrified as I was. Mind you, he was, he was very pink round the eyes, though. Spots, freckles? Yeah. Yeah, now you come to mention it, he did have a sort of uh, blemish under his chin here. As if it was brought on by shaving. Had he, by the way? What? Shaved. Oh, I don't know. I suppose he must have. No sign of growth? No. No shadows under the jowls? No, I'd say he was a pretty clean-shaven sort of lad. Well, you've done us proud, Mr Baldwin. So, could I put a younger age on him, say, uh, nearer 20 than 25? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. Right, now, the other bloke before he fades away. Yeah, well, I didn't get such a good look at him, did I? I mean, he wasn't the one that stuck the gun in my face. If you've seen him, you can picture him. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realise there's three of you. God bless you, Elsie. I won't say no. Uh, Mike, 
uh, about the girls, I just can't ask them to sit down and get on with the work as if now. Yeah, that's all right. Some they can have the rest of the afternoon. Yes, but... Yeah, well, don't worry. They'll get paid. Don't send any of the women home until they've seen me or one of my officers. Not one. All right? Well, if you say so, but there's one or two girls very upset. In fact, we all are, but there's a kid out there where she needs sedating. As soon as we can. Uh, thanks for the tea. It's all right. Now, is there a room where Sergeant Thornton can interview these women? Best get him started. Well, uh, apart from Ernie's office... No one's going to near that office till we've done all we have to. Storeroom, anything. Well, yeah, uh, Mrs. Howard's office, you can use that. That's the lady that just came in. She's in charge of the sewing room. I'll do that, then. Oh. Straight along the passage? Yeah. Yeah, you can't miss it. Just... Right. The other bloke. Oh, now, come on. Give me a minute, will you? Come on, love. Drink your cup of tea. She ought to go and lie down. Yes. She ought to be took home. Yes, but she can go home when the bobbies have had their statements, not before. I don't think you've got too much to say, have you, Sandra? He'll be all right, won't he? He'll be as right as they can make him, love. Mrs. Howard, I'd appreciate the use of your office. Talk to the girls. Yes, you're welcome. I'll have them in one at a time, then, OK? All right. Look, I, I know what your boss said, but this kid ought to go home. So I'm sending her. Well, don't say I told you, all right. Go on, what's her name? Uh, Pringle. Sandra Pringle. Through there? Yes. OK, who's going to be first, then? Come on, it won't take long. Come on, Mary Smith, you go in there. Yes. Elsa. Do you reckon Annie will be on? Oh, well, I don't know, do I? I think it'll be lost of blood more than I'll... Yeah, it'll be having transfusions next thing, won't it? Oh, it will. Hey, it'll be all right, I'm sure. Hey, has anybody been on Temley? Oh, oh my God. Well, she works at the hospital, doesn't she? Yes, she can't just leave her like that. Somebody's got to... You can't... Steve, what are you doing? I'm looking for something useful to do. Well, there's a good lad. Look, you get the van out and take Sandra home straight away. Quick. Right. Look, I'll go and find a phone and ring Emily. Right. Come on, Sandy, love. We'll get you on. Do you know she's shaking all over? I think. Yes. If they want anything there, see that they get it, will you? Yeah. All right. God, it'd be awful, wouldn't it? Working at hospital and somebody bringing your husband in like that. Has Mr. Henderson arrived, nurse? He's waiting for you, Mr. Liston. Makes a change. Let's take a look at the damage, then. Hey, what are they doing? I don't know, but some more of them just come detectives. They're in Ernie's office. Can you smell it? I can. Yeah, smell what? I can't smell all. I can smell that gun going off. Def mm. Hey. What's up, sir? Mo, go and open the window, love, will you? Hey, give over, we'll freeze. I don't care. Open it, love. Hey, listen, uh, have you heard any more about us, Mum? You, I, I don't know about your money. Don't worry about your money. I'm not Are worried. You? I mean, it's just that... Hey, Elsie, did you get No. Her? She'd finished her shift and she was on her way home. Hey, well, at least she's not still around the hospital, not knowing her. No, I'll pop over there afterwards and see what I can do. Uh, Vera were wondering about us money and all. Only some of us will be stuck for it. Yeah. Look, all I know was he said you could go over it, but he did say that you get paid for it. Yeah, but did he say we'd get paid for this afternoon or did he say we'd get all his money this afternoon? Oh, look, I don't... Look, mate, let me go and sort Elsie. that what's what. Elsie, when you rang hospital, did they say about her? No, love, they didn't. But they wouldn't, would they? I feel awful going on about you know. But it is our money, isn't it? And I'm skinned. So that's what you think, is it? It's a pretty good bet. They do you the week there's a bonus in the pay packet. Seems to me they know. The only way they can find out is from somebody working here. Are you suggesting that someone that I employ is... In with them, Mr Baldwin? If we're that simple, I doubt it. The trouble is, a little friendly conversation can go a very long way. One of your girls might have mentioned it to a neighbour, the pub, around the shops, even you could have mentioned it. Oh, come on. Do I get excited about a quarterly bonus? I don't even draw it. Let low go around chatting about it. Can you honestly tell me that you never mentioned the payroll you carry here? I can honestly tell you it does not come up in conversation, no. Oh. I've known blokes in golf clubs tell me the entire financial details of their businesses. Turn over payroll a lot. Just to let me know how hard done by they are and uh, how much the tax man doesn't love them. Yeah. Well, my golf club happens to be quite away from you. Where's that? 
Essex. Oh, yes. Just down the motorway. Villains are very mobile, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, the thing that concerns me is who your girls have been talking to. Take that into consideration and never exclude yourself. Mrs. Howard uh, says it's important. She wants Mr. Baldwin. Oh, let her in, then. It's the obvious questions. The girls want to know about the money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose I'd better get back to the bank. I'll arrange for somebody to go with you. Oh, thanks. Who's going to sort it out, then? Well, don't look at me. Well, I suppose I'll have to do it. Look, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to use uh, Mr Bishop's office. Oh, sorry, not before. until the forensic lads are happy. Well, I'll, uh, I'll tell him you're going to pay him out later this afternoon, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll uh, tell them I'll give them their basic, what they do last week, and uh, I'll give them the rest when I've sorted all this lot out, yeah, all right? Well, I'm sure they'll be happy with that. Right. Sort out the business of the bank, and then I want you down the road. Look at some mug shots. I want photographs of those two lads all over the country tomorrow. Oh, don't make it sound like murder. What's all the commotion over the road? I don't know. Something's happened. Sorry, love. Where is it you're going? I want to know what's happened. Are you work here, love? I, I want to know what's happened. My husband works here. Come on, over your road, love, to your house. You say your husband works here, love. What's his name? Ernest. Ernest Bishop. She's the wife. What happened? Emily. He's been hurt, Ernest. Quite badly hurt. How? How is he hurt? How? There's, there's been a robbery. How is he hurt? He's been shot. I must get to the hospital. I must get to the hospital. You will, love, you will. There's a car ready to take her. Oh, tell very much. How did it happen? Oh, look, I told you, love, they snatched the wages. There was two men. There was a gun. Oh, I must go. I must go. Look, I'll go with it if you like. Oh, can't you take her? Oh, well, yeah, but... About shop. I don't mind. Oh, look, you've got to get back and look after Stan. What, what about Betty Turpin? Oh, yes, if she can. Please. I've got to go there now. How did it happen? He'll be all right, love. Well, I'm sure he will, honest. There's a good girl. That's in your go. That's it. Oh, Betty, love. Thanks a lot. Oh, I mean, I know it's a lot to us. Oh, I mean, don't be daft, love. I think she'll be all right. Ian, yes, are you all right? Thank you, dear. How bad is it? No, I'm not the doctor, am I? Oh, I couldn't tell her. I just couldn't tell her. She wanted to know what was going on, and I have to say, I didn't know. You better get it home before you get robbed and all. Oh, any string, you know. Aye, I'd like to do it in my own hands, I would. Come on, move on now, please. There's no to see. Come on. Yeah, go on, get off home. I got loads of bloody vultures gawping. That all you can do, go! Fuck, they're all the same. Never there if you want a bit of help. And then goes wrong if there's an accident, they're flocking round like blooming jackals. Oh, Mrs. Bishop, he's in the theatre now. Mr. Liston has come in, so he's in very good hands. And the anaesthetist is Mr. Henderson. So it really is the first team. Very nice. Very nice, Mr. Henderson. They're doing everything they can, lovey, I'm sure. How long? Oh, there's no way of telling that. No. They haven't been in the theatre a quarter of an hour yet, so I should think it will be, well, quite a bit longer. Where's the best place for us to wait? Fred, it's not very comfortable here, but if you... They're, they're in the to see. Yes. We'll, we'll stay here. It, it's near. I, I shall have to leave you now. There's a machine for hot drinks in casualty. It's rather a long way, I'm afraid. I think it takes two penny pieces. Oh, you're not to trouble about that. Be prepared for quite a long wait.
Right, everyone that's had their money and seen the CID can go. Look, is it all right if we stay? Because I don't want to go on. Suit yourself, love. And I'm not going, so I know it's all right. Well, we won't hear anything from here, will we? Unless we organise something. Well, I've got to go to the hospital anyway. I'm going in there. Oh, you're very lucky you're not there already, like poor old Ernie. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you could have been shot just like that. Well, I don't think I'd have argued with him. Ernie did? <laughs> I'd have just handed over the money, no messing. You mean Ernie argued with them? When I looked through the door, they were waving a gun at him. Now, I'm not saying Ernie was arguing verbally. It's just that, well, obviously, he wasn't going to go along with them. What, we a gun in his face? Maybe he didn't believe it was real. Maybe he didn't think they'd use it. I'm just saying that he obviously wasn't going to just hand over the money. Isn't it funny? People who turn out to have all guts. Yeah, but maybe if I hadn't gone in when I did, I mean, uh, I think I might have panicked him. Oh, come on. It's no good blaming yourself now, is it? Yeah, but did I? I mean, those fellas were so worked out, I might have just tripped the balance. Oh, no good thinking about that now. Look, there were two of them. They had a gun, and somebody was going to get shot, whether it was you or somebody else. You can't blame yourself. Come on, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but why did Ernie have to be a hero, eh? Why? Yeah, well, I didn't see anything. I can't help it. There, Mrs. Oak. You said you couldn't keep the house warm, so I've nicked you this lovely fire. Just sit down, eh, Eddie? I haven't really nicked it. I mean, it was going gas, you know. <laughs> Eddie, this is a policeman. I know. Look, honest, I mean... It's not about you, Eddie. I'm not doing Stan, Eddie. But you never saw any gun. No, no, I, I just saw the blokes, you know. And you're sure there was three of them? Well, pretty sure, yeah. It was a Cortina, but I didn't really notice them much, you know. Would you reckon to put a face to any of them if you saw a picture? Oh, I don't know. What's happened? Well, he only seen them parked, you know. I mean, he'd no reason to take any special note, had you, Chuck? No, they were under the fire duct, you see, and I had to push me, me cart round them, like, you know. They might not have been them. I don't know. Well, I may want you to come with me later, look at some pictures. Are you on the phone by any chance? Uh, no. No, if you have a phone round here, all the neighbours is in all the time using it, so we don't bother. Well, I'll be in touch if we want you. Right. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Oh, you! Coming in here shouting about nicking stuff when we've got a policeman in the house, making a show of us all. What's happened? Ernie Bishop's been shot. You what? That's right. He'll get compensation, though, won't he? Well, he should get criminal injuries. Money. Well, it's right he should get some money. Yeah, well, it was money that caused this in the first place. Why do people want money so bad? Bad enough to hurt a man that never did anybody harm. Bad enough to do it and no thought about it. No thought for nothing except that. Well, I think they're sick. They're more than sick. They're evil. And I'll tell you something else. That evil's catching. What I'd like to do to those two, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, but that don't tell Perny, though, does it? Or Emily. Do you know, when I think of that poor woman sitting there, just waiting... I mean, we went through it all, didn't we? I mean, you can understand it in a way. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, to her, worst part must be that there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. Of course, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no sense in it, is there? Oh, God, I hope he's all right. I'll go in the hospital now. If I'm not back, see to everything, will you? Right. D did you ring? Yeah. No news. Hey, but listen, you know what they say? No news is good news. Very sorry. In the end, there was nothing we could do. Well, the drama continues tomorrow at the same time. Join us for classic Coronation Street at half six on Tuesday. The Gentle Touch is next tonight on Granada Plus, and a ring causes problems for Maggie and a new friend. Don't escape.